In a previous video, I showed you how to play and capture video using C++ Builder and FireMonkey. In this video, I'm going to show you how to play and capture audio using C++ Builder and FireMonkey. Let's first take a look at how to play audio using C++ Builder and FireMonkey. So I've got a project here which has some components on it, some buttons, two track bars, one for volume control and one to track the progress of the audio file that's being played. I've got a dialog to open the file. I've got a media player to play the audio file. And I've got a timer to keep track of the state of the audio that's being played and, and move the track bar along. Let's take a look at the code. First, when I click the button to select an audio file, I will use the T Media Codec Manager's Get Filter String by Type. I'll pass T Media Type Audio into it because I want to get the file extensions of the audio files that are available on the platform for playing audio, and I'll set that in the Open Dialogs filter property. And then I'll execute the dialog, and if the user selects a file and hits OK, then we'll do some more work. If not, then we'll just fall through. We'll take the file name that comes from the Open Dialog, and we'll set that in the Media Player's file name property. If that file actually has audio media in it, then we can display the name. So I'll call extract file name to just give me the, the name of the file and not the whole path. I'll disable the select button and enable the pause and clear buttons. I'll get the duration of the audio file and I'll stick that in a label called the duration label. I will also set the duration as the maximum of the duration track bar or the total length of the audio file that I'm going to play. I'll take the volume that the audio file was recorded at and I'll set the volume track bar current value to that. I've got a couple other labels where I just display uh, how many seconds I've played along the audio clip file. We'll set the audio file to the beginning, set the current time of the media to zero, and then we'll call play and then we'll enable a timer. The timer again is going to be used to track the progress of playing the audio. The on timer event code will get the current time and move the track bar to a current value to play along. And we'll update the playing label to the time that we've played so far in the number of seconds uh, of the audio file. If we're at the end of the song, meaning if the media player current time is greater than or equal to the duration of the audio file, then we'll reset everything. We'll clear the media player. We'll turn off some of the buttons for audio playing control and we'll initialize back all the labels and we'll set the duration track bar back to the beginning and then turn on the select button so that we can go and select another file. We can also change the volume by using the volume track bar. So it's on change event as we move it, we'll change the, val the volume of the audio that's being put out. We've also got a duration track bar change and in here we'll set the current time to wherever we drag the track bar to so we can move around inside of the audio file. Uh, the button for pausing and playing checks to see if the media player state is that it's playing, then we'll stop the media player and set the text of the button to be play instead of pause so we can restart playing from the, the point that we left off. If it's not playing, then we'll set the pause button text back to pause and we'll start playing again. So you can stop and start, stop and start. And uh, again, when you stop, it doesn't rewind. It just stops at that point so we can play from that on. And then if I hit the clear button again, I initialize everything back to its beginning state. So let's take a look at this application in action. We'll click select and play a song. Uh, my favorite, Jimi Hendrix, Purple Haze. We can uh, adjust the volume so you can hear me, and we can also jump around by moving the track bar. We can pause and play, and we can clear to go back and select another song. another song as well. And that's how easy it is to uh, play audio 
with C++ Builder and FireMonkey using the media player control. That's basically at one non-visual component. And then some other controls here to just keep track of what's playing and where it is and to move around in it. And again, I use the timer to update uh, the, the track bar for the current playing time in the audio file. Pretty simple, FireMonkey music player using C++ Builder XZ3. In this next project, I'm gonna show you how to capture audio using C++ Builder XZ3 and FireMonkey. On my form, I've just got a button, a couple labels, and a save dialog. If we look at the code, it's very simple to do audio capture in FireMonkey. First, in our form create event handler, we're gonna take the tCapture device manager, use the current device manager, and we're gonna get the default audio capture device. And we're gonna save that into my audio. My audio is defined over in my header file as a T audio capture device. And then on the button click, we're gonna see if we have an audio capture device. It's not null. Then we're gonna set the filter for the save dialog to be the media codec manager, get filter strings by type. We're gonna pass it the T media type audio. And that way we'll get all of the strings for the audio file formats that are supported by FireMonkey. And then we'll open up a save dialog where we can specify the directory and the file name that we want to save the audio in. And if we choose something or type in a name and then uh, hit the OK button, then we'll save that file name into the audio file name property. We'll set the uh, text label to be the file name that we chose. We'll change the button text to be stop audio capture so that when we're done, we can stop capturing. And then we'll call the start capture method of the audio capture device. And we'll keep capturing audio until we click on the button again to stop capture and we'll call stop capture. And then we'll reset the text for the next capture that we want to do. Very simple and straightforward to do audio capturing in FireMonkey and C++ Builder. Let's check it out. So we can uh, click on the button. Notice we don't have any file name uh, selected. So we'll click on the button. Here's our save dialog. We can navigate to whatever directory we want. Notice we've got the filter strings for the different file audio file formats that FireMonkey supports, WMA, MP3, and WAV on Windows. We can give it a name. How about test one? And then we can start capturing. So here's an example of capturing audio using FireMonkey and C++ Builder XZ3. And now we're done capturing. So we can switch back and look at the file and let's listen to it. And then we can start capturing. So here's an example of capturing audio using FireMonkey and C++ Builder XZ3. That's how easy it is to do audio capture and audio playing using C++ Builder XZ3 and FireMonkey.